Chapter 6 The tax bill arrived two weeks later, the day that Dad, Matthew, and Mark loaded the hogs onto the livestock trailer and took them all away. Most were going to the slaughterhouse. The ones too young and too small to bring a decent price were going to an auction for feeder pigs. Luke watched through the vent at the front of the house as Dad drove by in the battered pickup with each load. Matthew and Mark sat in the back of the pickup, making sure the trailer stayed hitched right. Even three stories up, Luke could see Matthew's hangdog expression. Then when the three of them came into the house for dinner, after washing the last of the hog smell off their hand in the mudroom, Dad handed Mother the tax bill without any comment. She put down the wooden spoon she'd been using to stir the stew. She unfolded the letter, and then she dropped it. Why is it this? She seemed to be doing the math in her head. She bent to retrieve it. That's three times what it is usually. There must be a mistake. Dad shook his head grimly. No mistake. I talked to Williker at the auction. The Willikers were their nearest neighbors with the house three miles down the road. Luke always pictured them with monster scales and fierce claws because of the number of times he'd been cautioned. Oh, you don't want the Willikers to see you. Dad went on. Willikers says they raised everyone's taxes because of them fancy houses. Makes our land worth more. Well, isn't that good? Luke asked eagerly. It was strange he should hate the new houses for replacing his woods and forcing him to stay indoors, but he'd half fallen in love with them. Having watched every foundation poured, every wooden skeleton of walls and roofs raised to the sky, they were his main entertainment. Aside from talking to Mother when she came upstairs for what she called my loop breaks, Sometimes she pretended his room needed cleaning as badly as the bread needed baking or the garden needed weeding. Sometimes she just sat and talked. Dad was shaking his head in disgust over Luke's question. No, it's not good. Not unless we're selling and we ain't. All it means for us is that the government thinks they can get more money out of us. Matthew was slumped in his chair at the table. How are we going to pay, he asked. That's more than we got for all the hogs, and that was supposed to carry us through for a long time. Dad didn't answer. Even Mark, who normally had a smart alecky comeback for everything, was stupefied. Mother had turned back to her stew. I got my work permit today, she said softly. The factory's hiring. If I get on there, I can maybe get an advance on my paycheck. Luke's jaw dropped. You can't go to work, he said. Who will, he wanted to say, who will stay with me? Who will I talk to all day when everyone else is outside? But that seemed too selfish. Luke looked around. No one else looked surprised by Mother's news. He shut his mouth.